made an advantageous settlement with the minor creditors, which completed the foreclosure, and you can take possession immediately. <laughs> Joe, you're a great amount of peace. You see, boys, when the jazz man put the records on these kids, you wore it. But you know, Gordoni, I am a man of a very few words. And when I talk, I say a lot. And just now I say like that great philosophy, he who's a god gets more. And he who goes to take it away from he who's a god, he gets a little bit too. What a brain, what a brain. Yeah, sure. I don't get it. Now listen, boys. I lend the money to the people for the legal interest of a 35%. And when they don't pay, Joe make it a foreclosure and I take over the business. Just an hour, I got a seven businesses. This one make eight. Hey, Joe, what's this uh, new business I got now? It's the Associated Recording Company. What's that? Yeah, you'd better come downtown and see for yourself. Okay, boys. We all go downtown and take a look for myself. Hey, boys, what do you do with your old hats? I put my head in them. That's what I thought. Boy, you got a spot here, huh? Oh, yeah. Look at the size of that special place, huh? Will you tell Mr. Thorne that Mr. Jonathan is here? And Mr. Gordoni, too. Go right in. He's expecting you. Thank you. Now, you fellas wait here. Danny, you come with me. Mr. Oh. Thorne's been president of this company for years. And if you contemplate running this business, I'd suggest that you keep him. Yeah, I think you got a good idea there. But I just elected myself to president by a big majority. You can be the manager. Well, I'd be very happy to, uh, Mr. Uh, That's uh, Mr. Gordoni. I'm Danny. Danny the Duck. How are you? Well, now that everything is settled, get everybody back on the job and we start the work the first thing in the morning. Yes, sir. But of course you understand, uh, we'll have to engage talent before we start to operate. Operate? Who's a Sikh? No, no, he means actors. Yes, so that recordings can be made. Oh, sure, sure. Actors, yeah. You get everything right. I give you all the actors you want. I would suggest the actors you engage will give an audition for me. Oh, sure. We'll give anything you want. Well, see you the first thing in the morning, eh? Huh? Come on, Joe. Right. Well, kick the pants, boys. See you tomorrow, Tony old pal. See you tomorrow. Will you come in, please? Right away. Yes? Miss Rogers, that was Mr. Gordoni, the new owner. He contemplates starting operation in the morning. And, uh, well, I've been demoted from president to manager. Would you mind acting as receptionist until we're uh, fully organized? I'd be happy to, Mr. Thorne. Well, then let's get started and uh, call back some of the staff. Now, who do we need? Well, there's uh, Whalen, sound engineer, uh, Martin, shellac mixer, and uh, Jerry Hart. Jerry Hart is out. The new owner is engaging the talent. Besides, Mr. Hayward would never handle any of his records. Oh, yes, he will. I took care of that. Mr. Hayward had a good laugh when he found out why Jerry really knocked his son down. Well, if it were up to me, I wouldn't have him around if he worked for nothing. I hope he's in the gutter, where he belongs. Say, are you in love with that egotistical pup? Why, of course not, Mr. Thorne. I can't understand women. My only interest in Mr. Hart is in behalf of this company. He was our ace recording officer. And if you will permit me to say so, I think it's very bad business to allow personalities to interfere with so valuable an asset as Mr. Hart. Well, I'm against it. Just one minute, please. I tell you, I could get you all the talent you want. I used to be in the business. I used to be a trooper. Turn that ladder, will you, Paulie? Look. All right, all right, the Pavlova. So you think you can get actor talent, sir? I can lay enough talent in your lap to entertain a world. Yes, but I don't want them in my lap. I never mix business with the pleasure. Don't take me illiterately, will you? All right, you get the actors, Danny. Go on. Take it a gun. All right, goodbye. <laughs> Baby. 
bit of happiness I owe you. Puss, that was the only reason I let you bring me here, so I could see him. Oh, yeah? Well, see if you can get him to pay your check. Well, well look who's here. Hello, man. Hello, Jerry. Uh, here alone? Yes. Gee, it's good to see you. How have you been? Oh, all right. You still with Associated? Yes. How's the old gang? Fine. No one still carrying a hate for me? No. Say, you're looking swell. You haven't changed a bit. No, I'm feeling great. Doing good, too. Oh, Mr. Hart, would you autograph this menu for me, please? Why, yes. Oh, thank you very much. See, you're still a great favorite with the girls. Yeah. But you're the only girl that means anything in my life, Anne. Say, Hart, what about that encore? Where do you think you are? That's your music. Go on up there and do that encore. Peddle your personality up there and let the women alone. Say, listen, this lady happens to be a friend of mine. Oh, is that so? A friend of yours? Well, entertain your dolls at home. Now, come on and do that encore. <laughs> Well, it wasn't a good job anyway. No, but it was a job. I guess I'll be leaving town in the morning. What do you mean? I had an offer from a company in Chicago that makes those little ten-cent records. Oh, but you mustn't do that, Jerry. I mean, uh, that's why I came down to see you tonight. Um, Mr. Thorne asked me to. Thorne? Yes, he, uh, he called me in his office and... You know the stance he takes when he's about to deliver an oration, you know? He says, Miss Rogers, we're about to start operation in the morning under new ownership. Go out and find Jerry Hart. Ask him to come back and work for us. Why, he was the very backbone of Associated. Go ahead and rip me. I deserve it. But I can take it. No, I mean it, Jerry. Thorne does want you back. He, he told me to, to have you out the first thing in the morning. Say, it looks like I've had Thorne all wrong at that. But then I've had a lot of things wrong, haven't I? Well, just a few. And you're swell. I love you. Come in. Mr. Thorne, I just want you to know how much I appreciate you taking me back. Out of here. I, uh, I understood I was to work here again. Well, if you are, somebody's keeping it a secret from me. Now get out and stay out. Oh, oh Jerry, are you here already? Yes, I'm making a poison appearance. You know, the early bird catches the work stuff. Only I caught the air. Then you've seen Mr. Thorne? Seen him and heard him. I suppose he uh, 
pretended he didn't know anything about your coming back to work. Yes, that's just what he pretended. Wasn't that a scream? Um, oh, dear, I remember now. It was the, uh, it was the new boss I spoke to about you. Now, look, Ann, when it comes to being a pal, you're a chin. But as a fixer, you're a rank amateur. I admit I lied to you, Jerry. But it was only because I was positive the new owner would put you to work. Oh, that's okay, honey. If I could only come back here over Thorne's head, I'd work here for nothing. Get in there. What for? I'll tell you later. Go on. What? I'll tell you later. Hurry up. Oh, Mr. Gordoni. Yes. Uh, I understand you're having an audition for some new talent this morning. Yes, we're going to have the audition, but uh, I don't need it. Well, uh, you see, we, we had a recording artist here prior to your taking over the place uh, whose records outsold all of our other records, and uh, uh, I was thinking that... Uh, I see you. You want to get him a job, eh? <laughs> yes, that's it. Okay, you have to make the audition before me and my staff. That's us. Yes, sir. I'll have him here right away. Thank you very much. Hurry, Jerry. Come on here, quick. What's the rush? Listen, go downstairs and audition for Mr. Gordoni, the new owner. Audition? What for? They have hundreds of my records here. Please, for once, let me do your thinking for you. Go down there and sing the IOU song. Over the orchestrations at the merry-go-round. Then hop on your little wooden horse and get it. Yeah, but I was thinking that... Stop thinking and do as I say. Now, wait a minute, you know. We're not married yet. Come on. Hold us like it back. Hey, Mr. Haldot giving me a chance. Look, lip control. Stop annoying me with that punch of Judy, will you? Punch and Judy, you old dribble puss. Dribble puss? Get away from me a little tree stuff before I split you up into killing wood. Oh, wise guy, huh? Yeah, wise guy. Listen, you with the ingrown voice, stop making me argue with this hunk of lumber before somebody catches me with a butterfly net. You, know, you ought to be ashamed of yourself annoying the poor gentleman. Mr. Gentleman, I apologize, and if you are a gentleman, you'll accept it. Well, all right, I... Ouch! All right, yeah. Yeah. Come on, boss. Where do you get a load of the trouble I got for you? You got a good load? They ain't stale. They'll give you ghost pimples all over you. Yeah, but what I want with the geese pimples all over me. We're ready, Mr. Gordoni. All right. Okie dokies. Shoot! Not now. Wait a minute. Where do we see what they do first? Go ahead. <laughs> Don't interrupt me now. Smells to me. But, Mr. Gordoni, you don't seem to understand. For records, we must have singers, music. Is that a so? I'm sorry. Well, it's all right, Danny. You did a good job. Here. They work hard. You pay them off. I'll pay off, boss. They all done it as a favor to me. No, that's all right. Here. I never thought you'd go soft on me. Now, what else do you want? Well, you see, the type of talent we need is name talent. People like uh, Ted Lewis, uh, Kate Thompson and her singers, Cab uh, Calloway and his band. Okay, we'll get them. But the names I mentioned are all under contract to radio, stage, and motion pictures. Mr. Thorn, I am a man of a very few words. When I talk, I say a lot. And just now, I say we'll get them. You hear that, boys? Sure. Boy. He want Ted Calloway and Cab Lewis. And, uh, well, anyway, you get them. But... Okay. Sure. Now, what else do you want? Well, okay, we'll get them. Well, 
glass of water. Wait, sir, uh, without ice. If you think the hand is quicker than the eye, why, well, I'm inclined to disagree, and here's the reason why. I've discovered something new, and if you folks think it's queer, watch me prove to you the hand is quicker than the ear. Yes, sir. I can make you think that you're hearing from bones. Here's the proof that I can. Why, I'm a musical, magical man. Now, if you'd rather hear the saxes, why, I'll just wave my hand. Yeah, I'm a musical, magical man. Once I thought I'd bear down and study hard to be a great Houdini, but I prefer to let my hair down. I want to be a Tuscan ninny. Are you sure this is the station? Here it is, station WXXZ, 830, K. Thompson and guest star, Joe DiMaggio. Joe DiMaggio, the ball player? I'm laying off of him, he hits too hard. Besides, the boss only wants K. Thompson. Come on. <laughs> With the crazies pushing up the daisies I watch the clock on the wall Wait for your step in the hall It's hard to believe, hard to conceive It's over all over, nothing at all You think love, it isn't worth a nickel for one But for two, it's divine Stop it, quarrel, there is no doubt They never know what the call's about One day it's this and the next day it is that Nobody knows just where he's at
what's the program, my director? Where's our guest star for tonight? Joe DiMaggio, the great best ball player. Now, don't worry, Mr. Spadoni. He'll be here in just a minute. Smart fellow. Where is he? Where is he? Testa di pazzo. Perché non fai lo spin? Well, Mr. DiMaggio's been delayed by a doubleheader. Two games, but he's on his way here and will arrive any minute. Two game bullhead? What are you talking about? Oh, there'll be no wait. The Artist Bureau is sending over a singer to fill in Mr. DiMaggio's spot until he gets here. Well, where is the singer? Where is DiMaggio? Come on, get somebody out of the pepper. Ah, no, no. Here I am. Me too, but uh, please uh, sit down. If uh, Mr. DiMaggio don't come, you take his place. But don't get nervous. If he comes, you don't have to sing. But don't get excited, please. What's the matter? Are you far enough? I pay you just the same. But I am. I know you're a good singer. But thank you, time. Huh? You're on the air. Are you? Come on, please. Come on, come on. Not tonight. Well, come on, sing. Have you ever been in heaven? Well, I was last night. Stop! Stop! Excuse me, please. You sing absolutely not. You tenor? No. You baritone? No. You basso profondo? No. Only man. What are you? I'm a center fielder. You bolo catcher? Quarterback? Santa Ville, the Maggio, <laughs> the Maggio, hey, Papa, don't move here. That's easy. Siciliano, bravo, <laughs> the Maggio, Joe the Maggio. <laughs> I am very, very sad I make this very bad mistake, but I was so excited to see Joe the Maggio that I got myself all mixed up. I hope you forgive me. Thank you very, very much. <laughs> And now, Joe, tell me what was the greatest thrill when you played the center field? Well, my biggest thrill was playing in the last World Series between the Yanks and Giants in New York. It feels swell to make a hit. But when the fans y'all play home run, every ball player wants to sock him. I step up to the plate and bang that ball straight on the nose. And once you saw it play home run, believe me, those cheers, the roar of the crowd, was the real thrill of my life. That was a thrill I shall always remember. Hello? Is that you, boss? Well, this is Danny. The duck, yeah. Look, we got Ted Lewis and Kay Thompson on the wax. You want us to cut any more? What do you mean on the wax? I don't understand. I speak English. I mean, do you want us to make any more records of them? Sure, make a whole bunch. Okay, we'll make all you want. Say, Danny, how about this uh, taxi cab Callaway's? We gotta got him, you know. Cab Callaway. <laughs> Thank you, God. <laughs> I've heard the story about Minnie the Moocher. And now, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to tell you a story about a little friend of mine. And his name is Yasha. Yasha was a prodigy since he was a kid of three. He could play a rhapsody as good as they come. But as strange as it may be, Osha hated melody. He had a yen for timpani. He longed to play a drum. When his mama made him practice on his fiddle every day, he'd stop right in the middle and he'd say, Just want 
to sign on the dotted line. What's this? A life contract with no option. Mr. Gordoni gave you a term contract? Gordoni? No. That's your contract. Don't I have any say in the matter? Yes, just two little words. I do. But, Jerry... Oh, listen, Ann. I've made arrangements for a wedding that'll knock everybody silly. Ballroom at the Waldorf, two bands, newsreel camera... Oh, no, Jerry. Let's be married quietly and simply. Let's don't start out as death. Okay. Uh, how about the little church around the corner? Tonight, that's simple enough. All right, darling. Then it's all set? Wait a minute. Do you promise to love, honor, and obey? Oh, I'll take the oath right now. I, Jerry Hart, promise to love, honor, and obey the sweetest girl in all the world, Ann Rogers. I promised until death do us part, never to look at another girl. Sure, you haven't done this before. I've been rehearsing for you. Yes? All right. Oh. They want you to say, I do, in recording room three. Okay. I just thought of it. I'll be recording until a quarter of six. I can meet you at the church. Oh, that will make it perfect. That will hold you till six o'clock. Pardon? Is Mr. Gordoni here? Will you state your business, please? Business? It's none of your business. What's my business? Hmm. Yes? Mr. Gordoni, a lady to see you. Well, I'm not in. What? He say he's not here. Well, I'd better take a look for myself. Oh, wait a minute. You must go in there. Just a moment. It's all right. I'll see him with the mall. Bye. <laughs> Gentlemen, my mom. <laughs> Tony, I'm ashamed from you. What kind of business is this you got, sir? Uh? Oh, Mama, why are you ashamed with this business? I didn't know records. Uh, and uh, you, what kind of friend you are? And you, and you, and you. And you to let them be in this kind of business. Oh, what are you, Mama? This is a nice business. A nice business you got. The many the much. Uh, and uh, this, uh, hide the hoe, and hood the hoe. And uh, this, all the same kind. Uh, uh, you got uh, something in the mother tongue? Uh, no, only crazy music. Hot your business. Uh. But, Mama, you don't understand that. Uh, uh, sure, sure. Your mama, she's a dumbbell. Uh, no, I don't say that. I, uh, I, I'll tell you what's the matter for you. You're ashamed from your mama, ashamed from your papa, ashamed from your brothers and your sisters, ashamed from your aunts and your uncles and your cousins and all your relatives. No, I'm not going to shame for my people. Uh, last night, uh, I go to the opera. I hear the great Charlazzini. She sing in Italiano in the mother tongue. That's uh, music. Uh, you got that on the records? Uh, no, no, I'll tell you why. So because, uh, because you're ashamed. Uh. Well, Mommy, all right. You want this, what you call the Chalazini? Then you're going to get the Chalazini. Are you going to get him? Are you going to bring him? Are you going to get him? You're going to have him? When? Uh, soon, soon. Uh, uh, I, I, 
Uh, Sonny, I'm a woman of very few words. Uh, and when your mama talk, uh, she say a lot. Uh, but right uh, now, I say uh, that if you don't get the great Tarazzini on the records, uh, none you never come home to me. Uh, I guess I don't go home pretty soon. Inner side is my son, and he is my business. Yes? Send Mr. Thorns in. Yes, Mr. Gordoni. Mr. Gordoni wants to see you right away. You, uh, you want to see me? No. I don't want to look at you. I want to talk to you. Sit down. Mr. Zorn, by now you must know I'm a man of very few words. When I talk, I say a whole lot. And right now I say I want that Charles Zini, the Italian opera star, to come here and make a record for me right away. Charles Zini? The great Charles Zini? Why, that's impossible. What do you mean, impossible? You think I want to be ashamed of my country people, my relatives, my mom and my pop? Never say impossibly, I got to have a Charles Zini right away. But, well, first of all, she sings her farewell performance on Saturday night and sails for her native land on Sunday. Well, what about, what about? The world was made in seven days, and this is only Tuesday. Why, it's ridiculous to even think about it. Every recording company in the world has been after her and couldn't get near enough to make an offer. Why, because? Well, she's temperamental, imperious, always surrounded by maids, butlers, chauffeurs, bodyguards. Why, to get to her is like, like breaking into jail. Mr. Tom, he's got it. Goodbye. Porca miseria in tutta l'Italia e l'America in testa dura, quel animale. Hey, boss, what do you want this Shana Zini? You know, busting in the jails is right up my alley. Testa dura. You know what I mean in English? That means you're big and income poopers. Don't you realize you're talking about one of my country people? Charles Zini is a great artist. She must be got it to the heart. I get it, boss. Right through the heart. Crazy people. I don't mean with the bullets. I mean with the kindness, romance. Love. Oh, oh, boss. You know me and I love stuff. But only me charmer. You. You charmer. You couldn't charm nobody. You Chris. You no no, I, I don't mean you, Miss Rogers. I was a, I was a talking to him with this income purpose here. Huh? Recording room? Come and write it down right away. Go right down. Yes. All right. Yeah, get out of here, get out of here. Let me think about myself. Hey, Danny. You come with me. Eddie, you stay here and clean up the office. For every thrill I've ever known, this very life I call my own, I owe you. Darling, oh, so that's the guy, huh? I'm such a love divine. Hey, Danny, what's the matter? I don't like that guy. He do something to you? Plenty. That's kid who made himself. Mr. Singer, the Manhattan Murray girl. I want to name with five different tomatoes. And the minute they heard this guy wobble, I lost every one of them. Wait a minute. So that's Kid Romance himself, huh? Danny? I think I got something. I'm going to let Miss Rogers have a talk with me. Hey. <laughs> you look like twins. Hey, you quit looking like me. Uh. Say, Miss Rogers, I just hear a fellow singer downstairs, sir. You know him? Oh, that's Jerry Hart. You remember, you told me to engage him the day of the audition. Oh, yes. They say when he sings, the women go crazy for him. They say he's got what it took. Oh, if you're referring to that, that trouble he got into, that wasn't his fault, really. He didn't care anything about that girl. You're not thinking of firing him. Fire him? No, I want to raise him up his wages. Oh, Mr. Gordoni, you're an angel. <laughs> Me? I'm no angel. You tell him I want to see him right away. Yes, sir. Recording room? Uh, tell Jerry Hart to come up here right away. Mr. Hart, I got a bigger surprise for you. I'm going to raise him up for your wages. Oh, gee, thank you very much, Mr. Gordoni. Well, don't mention about it. I understand that you are Kido Romance himself, and uh, when you sing, you take away the people's tomatoes. Uh, see, I'm afraid I don't understand you. Then I'm going to make it more plainer. They tell me when you sing, the ladies can't patrol themselves. 
So I wanted you to meet a lady tonight. I'm sorry, Mr. Godoni. You see, I can't do that. I'm engaged to be married to Miss Rogers. In fact, we're being married tonight. Sit down. Say, what's the idea? When Eddie says sit down, I think it's better you sit down. Now, this is the idea. I'm going to have the Charlazini, the big opera star, make a record for me. So I want you to go out and, uh, what do you call, uh, charm her and uh, bring her here. Well, I can't do that. I'm being married today. Where till the boss is through? Eddie there always sees the boss get something he wants. Well, this is one thing he's not going to get. Take it easy. Do what the boss wants. For that girl out there you want to marry will be found floating down the East River. Get me? Oh, listen, you can't bluff me. No? And you'll be floating right along with her. Uh, Eddie, cut out that rough stuff. That is, uh, right now. Of course, if you don't get a shot of to make it the record, then you know what to do. And you? You'll be sure you don't tell nobody about it. Oh, but listen, Mr. Gordon. Of course, if you do get the shot of to make it the record uh, for me, then uh, Miss Rogers will not be bothered by it here. But if you don't, well, <laughs> Eddie is a funny fellow. Oh, well, all right. All right. You run along with Danny. He'll take good care of you, and... Uh, Eddie, he will stay here and be the bodyguard to Mr. Rogers and see if nothing happened to her. All right, but make sure that nothing does happen to her. Hey, Danny. You keep your eye on top of that fellow. Just like I was his mother. Oh, where's Anne? She's done gone. Well, if she comes back, tell her that if we ain't here, when we get back, we have gone someplace. But she ain't coming back at all. She's gone for the day. Well, then all your troubles are over. You don't need to tell her a thing, sweetheart. Oh, hush, young man. Are you kidding? Danny! Okay. My dear child, you may have been delayed. in that opera? Or maybe it was when I was sleeping. Quick, come on. Hi, taxi. Get in there. Follow that car. She gave us a slip, all right. We'd better go home and try again tomorrow night. Yeah, well, you're staying right with me and we're trying tonight. There's a car right over there. Come on. Hey, where are you going? I've got a phone in. Okay, but not tonight.
What'd I tell you? She's not here. No, no, no! No, she ain't here. She's there. Sit down. Hey. Spaghetti for two. Spaghetti for one. I am not hungry. No, sir. Spaghetti for two. I am. Yes, sir. Uh-oh. Sit down there and exercise your tonsils, Canary. She wants to get away from it in this, her hour of relaxation. See, what'd I tell you? And she's right, that upper stuff is the bunk. Uh -huh. Come on, Canary, chew it. Throw it here into it. Mull it down, something soothing. The romance stuff. Find a torch. Oh, yeah, I know. A nice, soothing love song. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, mama, I want to get hot, child. I want to make the fun. Just want to go da di a di a di a di a ta ta di a di a I've got no desire to carry a strata various buffets. No limit of primitive tum tum in a tum tum. No, no, no. Wait a minute. Play you off with that hot stuff. Play her a nice love song. Go away. Bravissimo. Bravissimo. How's he doing, babe? Who are you? Hey, no clay pigeon. You're tuned in on a guy that trills millions. Jerry Hart. A record maker and a heartbreaker. Oh. Come here for a moment. Come on, she wants to see you. Come on, monkey, get in there. Remember, ready? He loves to see bodies floating down rivers. Okay. Sedete. Oh. Ah, look out! Be careful. You have studied boys, yes? No. You're appearing someplace, yes? No. Why, listen, sister. Do you suppose we let this baby sing in public while only a few of the mugs would hear him? No. No. I don't mean yes. This guy's voice is going down into prosperity. Do you realize that in the United States alone there's over 25 million mugs with phonographs? Now suppose each one of them phonographs only has four records. That means over 500 million records in the United States alone. And it's six to an even that this canary's verse is unhabitable. Figure it out for yourself. Pick up the flag and take it with you. And that's only the United States, madam. Why you take England alone? 
and multiply it by France and Germany and Russia and Italy and see what you've got. And he's the baby that does it. You've got a baby? No, 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 no. He's the baby. A oh, honey. A love boy. Please. You tell me, what is he talking about? Uh, well, you see, madam, when you make a record, the voice lives on long after the singer has gone. On the other hand, the great singers who have passed on without leaving their voices for the parts music lovers have been forgotten. Now, take yourself as an example. Who can hear your beautiful voice? Just the chosen few, those who can afford it. Have you ever given a thought to the poor or the sick or the bedridden who cannot come to hear you? Think of those unfortunates whose burdens you could lighten by the sound of your beautiful voice. Ora per la sua spruzzatura, signora. All right. Uh, pardon me while I stretch. Spray? No, no. Uh, the neck. Oh, oh spray. Yes. Uh. What day is today? Tuesday, madame. And what day was yesterday? Monday, madame. And tomorrow? Wednesday, madame. You're right. Today is Tuesday. Have you lost your head? You should know by this time that I'm Tuesday fairly twice. Oh, I'm just sick and tired of you. Get out, get out right away. Get out, I tell you. For me, too? No, you sit down here. What were you saying? He was telling you that if you was to sing for a record, after you cross... Oh, look! I'm doing nice. So, little baby. If their mama doesn't kiss them goodnight, they don't sleep. They cry and whine. They might even die. Oh, yes, I can understand that. Yes. Good night, baby. Good night. Do you want to kiss a nice man? Huh? She says yes. Yes. Kiss her, kiss her. That's right. He wants to kiss him, too. Yeah, but she, she bit me. She never bites. Oh, my little fella. My beautiful fella. <laughs> All those dogs. I love them. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> Give out. <laughs> oh, and now to get back to what I was saying. Uh, madam, by putting your voice on a record, you would become a public benefactor to the entire world. And you can do that for me? You can make the great Charlesini a public benefactor? Certainly. Oh, you're so kind to do this for me, but how? Madam, it'll be a pleasure. Now, uh, if you'll permit me to call on you, say, uh, tomorrow afternoon at 2, Tomorrow, too, is so far away. It can be had, or it'll not. Oh, yes, Madame Chalazzini. Any time you say. You call me Madame Chalazzini. It's so cold. Why don't you call me like all the loved ones? They call me Charlie. Uh, Charlie? Ah, uh, you say it so sweetly. What do they call you? Oh, uh, just plain Jerry. Jerry. Jerry, that's nice. Americans with names like uh, Tom, Dick, and Harry are so ordinary, but Jerry, Jerry, it's so musical. And I'm Danny. So it is arranged. You'll have breakfast with Charlie in the morning, no? Uh, no. He means yes. <laughs> oh, that's grand. Yes. And so it will be, huh? Good night. Good night. Good night, madam. Charlie. Good night, Charlie.
Now, wait a minute. What's the idea of that hand-kissing gag up there? That's the custom of those foreigners. What? I wanted you to kiss her hand like this. Woo, 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 woo. <laughs> All right, Kuna, come on, let's go. I'll see you in the morning. I'll have that scatterbrain over at Gordoni's place. I don't worry about it. I've got a phone in. Wait a minute. You remember me, don't you? Tell me to duck. We're sticking together. Now, listen, I'm just fed up with this. Lay off me. Oh. Oh. Hey, taxi. Come here. I it was a flower part that hit you. Hey, you'll be all right now. Hey, what have you been doing to him, huh? Not a thing. I just had to crack him on the bin a little bit, that's all. But he's fine. And look, he's got that shell that's any eating out of his hand. She's coming down tomorrow and make a record for us. You yeah. said that that's that's fine, that's fine. <laughs> Rogers, would you please tell Mr. Gardoni that uh, the great Madame Charlottesini is here? Yes. <laughs> yes. Mr. Gardoni, a Miss Charlottesini to see you. By all the meanings, bring her in. Go right in. Jeremy, Charlie wouldn't know what to do without you. Madame, I am a man of a very few words. When I talk, I say a whole lot. And right now, I say welcome to my countrywoman, uh, the great uh, Charlazine. Thank you. Madame. Madame. Uh, Madame. Oh, I mean, uh, Charlie has decided to make a record for Associated. So as to give a thirsty world a chance to drink of her lovely voice. Oh, madame, a thousand time thanks, a million. No, that's not enough, a billion. <laughs> <laughs> madame, she can write them up her own tickets. Tickets? Oh, uh, he means uh, you can name your own terms. Terms? La moneta, la moneta. Uh, pay. Pay? Pay? The great charity to receive a pay for being a benefactor to the poor, to the sick, to the hungry, to the bedroom? Huh, I'm insulted. Come, take the great charity home. Oh, but Charlie, you could give the money to some worthy charity. Yes, Madame Pato, that wasn't my idea, you see. I'm a man of a very few words. Sometimes I talk, I say a lot. I get myself all a mix-up. <laughs> uh, don't you see, uh, you'll not only be given your voice to the world, but you'll be given to the needy as well. Oh, yes. Now Charlizini sees. <laughs> oh, madame, you have a beautiful soul. <laughs> ah, you see, the poor people, they don't got money. No. But the rich people, they got money. After you sing, and we put your face on the wax, the poor people get the <laughs> money, and that's fine. <laughs> 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 that's a beautiful. <laughs> Listen, Ann, you're going to hear the truth. I suppose that'll make everything quite all right. Oh, but Ann... <coughs> then everything is a hokey dokey eh? Mm-hmm. Where's my Jerry? Oh, there you are, baby. You haven't forgotten what you promised me at breakfast this morning. Breakfast? Oh, uh, oh, I can't seem to remember now. Isn't that funny? That you'd make a record of your beautiful boy. Oh, certainly. Surely, Charlie. Uh, come on, come along. Oh, that's marvelous. Let's go.
fellas. What's the idea? We're making records here. What's the idea? Hey, what's the matter with you? Ha, 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 hey, fellas. <laughs> what's the matter, Jerry? Where did they stop? Don't they want to play for Charles Zini? Why, yes, certainly, of course. I'll have Ted play a song for me. Oh, that's marvelous. They'll play for you and you'll play for me. That's right. Say, Ted, would you mind playing the number for me? I want to make a record for the great Charlazzini. What's a Charlazzini? Ixnay Akin Cray. But that's... Well, that's all right. Now, you sit right here, Charlie, and uh, my voice will come right out there. Oh, Jerry, how do you do it? You sing out there and it comes out here? That's right. Oh, baby, I know. It's like your American song. The music goes round and round and it comes out here and it leaves out there. <laughs> that's it, exactly. Now, sit right here, make yourself comfortable, and you'll enjoy it, I hope. Jerry, I'm thrilled. So am I. Ted, will you play the heaven number for me, please? Okay, Jerry. All right, boys, this is for my buddy. Do you mind? Charlie, you're going to hear the record I just made for you. Sit down here, huh? Have you ever been I'd love to have your voice on the other side. Fine, madame. Eh? And so it is arranged. Tomorrow we will make the record of your beautiful voice. Eh? Yes. Tomorrow. On the other side of the one that Jerry made for me. And the new one. <laughs> and daddy? Oh, uh, Charlie, would you mind waiting a moment? I must see Mr. Godoni. Wait a moment, my baby. Charlie would wait for you forever. Well, you are killing romance himself, eh? You did a great job. You got the great Charlazzini. That's just what I came to see you about. You have your Charlazzini now. My job is finished. No, no, your job is not finished yet. Not until you get a beautiful voice on the records. And uh, remember... Jerry? How could I forget? Yes, Charlie? Hurry up, baby. We will be late. We must take the dog to the park, and then we have an appointment for tea. <laughs> the great Charlazzini, eh? Now my mama will be happy. Yes? Yes. Yes. That's for me? Yes. Kay Thompson and her girls are ready to record. No, no, I can't see them now. I'm too busy. Eh? <laughs> I can't help if I'm too busy. I can't see everybody coming to the Well, you can see it in your office. See it in the office? What are you talking about seeing it in the office? No, it's in your office. Who's in my office? <laughs> well, I'll show you. Well, you'll have to go into <laughs> history because somebody's in my office. I'm crying. You have a remote control for short distance television set right here. Remote patrol? I thought it was a phonograph. How it works? Well, this is the signal for them to start. And when you get the signal light there, you turn this dial. <laughs> I owe you for everything that I possess, for every day of happiness. I owe you. I owe you for every thrill I've ever known, the very life I call my own. I owe you. Darling, out of the blue came a love. 
call this machine? Television. Television, eh? See, I want one of those sent to my place right away. I want one for my mom, one for my brother, one for my sister. Yes, Mr. Gordoni. And one for my uncle, Giovanni Bacicolo. Yes, Mr. Gordoni. This is terrible. This is awful. I can understand it. Now, how do you call it? This is awful. Here, here, here. You're all excited about nothing. How's Joe Martinetti? He can't do this to me. Oh, no. Oh, no. But, man, I'm not serious. I'm on the highway. He's so unhappy. I can't stand it anymore. I can't stand it. Pull back anything here. Don't you forget that I'm the great child of this? Sing me one of those. Carry down. I don't like that. Down, calm down. What's the matter? Why are you sending me? Get a load of it. Somebody home, eh? Mm, I'll show him. Oh, that must be him. He's come to apologize. Oh, it's you. It's a pleasure to again meet the great uh, Chalazzini. Come in. I'm mad. I'm furious. I'm angry. Uh, but come in. Don't, don't cry. Don't, don't cry. You know, madame, I am a man of very few words. When I talk, I say a whole lot, and right now I say, what's the matter? <laughs> what? <laughs> Martinette, the impresario. She won't let me make the record because she says it's in my contract. All she thinks is about his opera, my farewell performance. Oh, what does he care about my heart? My soul? She thinks you'll hurt me. Good. I'll hurt him. I'll hurt him. I'll get sick. No. Better still, I'll die. No. If I die, I can't be a public benefactor. What will I do? I must make this wounded net tough. Hey, boys, why not just grab her? No. I got a good idea. Madame, Joe, that's my mouthpiece. It's just a bit of foreclosure on a big Long Island state. Now, if the Shalazini, the great Shalazini, would go there, Martinelli could not find her. And if he cannot find her, he will do anything she asks to get her to sing his farewell concert for him. Jerry, that's marvelous. Martinelli won't be able to find me. Say, wait a minute. You can't do that. It would look like a kidnapping. Kidnap? That's it. Oh, think of the fun. Think of the publicity. Think of the public that loves me. Oh, they all cry because they'll think their Chalazini is kidnapped. And Martinetti, you go crazy. Then he'll be glad to let me be a benefactor. He'll be glad to let me make a record. <laughs> Come, let's go get kidnapped. Say, so you fellas can't do this. Yeah, we're doing it. She's due. Here, please. Oh, but Charlie, I... Uh... Oh, I wouldn't be kidnapped without you. Mm. Oh, of course, Charlie. Uh, I'll go. Let's go, everybody. She's in the baggage. Good morning. Hello, Good morning. boys. I bring you a little present. Oh, isn't he cute? What's his name? Salchich. That's uh, sausage in Italian. <gasps> My dog. They must be crying. I think I'll go home. Daddy will get them for you. Ah, oh, look, boss, I ain't no dog catcher. Cooking is more in my line. He will get them for you. Oh, good. How's everything? Oh, everything just as smooth, as smooth as, uh, as the, uh, the silk in your stockings. Uh, look. Yes, yes. See what I got here, look, eh? <laughs> <laughs> look at it. The great Chalazini. Victim of kidnap's plot. 
<laughs> your martinetti will come to terms. You. <laughs> You must find a before tomorrow night, or I am a disgrace. Can you imagine it, me, Emanuele Giovanni Martinetti, impresario of the opera for 26 years? A disgrace. Here. Here she is. Here she is. You must find her. You must find her. Oh, I'll get the stroke. I'll die. Yes, yes, this is Martinetti the Empresario. I say yes, this is Martinetti the Empresario. Who? Gardinias? Uh, Gordoni? Never heard of him. No, I do not know him. Tell him that... Wait a minute. Where is Gordoni? Outside in my office. Have him set up. But I do not know him. I'll introduce you. Have him come up. All right, show him up. Oops. Excuse, please. Telephones of his yours and but they bless from the last. Hello, Chief. Hello, boys. What there is here? Eh? Red? Signor Martinetti. Si. What are a parlare de sola? Si. I would like to speak to you alone. I bring news from the great uh, Chalazini. <laughs> Uh, Mr. Z, please excuse me. I want to talk to my countrymen along uh, in private, eh? Uh, uh. All right. All right. Come on, boy. Ah. Go ahead. Go ahead. Signor Martinetti. Si. I am a man of a very few words. Si. And when I talk, I say a whole lot. And just now I say, Mr. Charles un artista bella, bella voce di angelo, in tutti la mene. Sì, 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 I know, I know, I know, but where is she, where is she? That's all right, patrol yourself. I know, but where is she, please? Un, aspetta un momento, aspetta un momento. Aspetta, aspetta un momento. Senti, parlare un po'. Parla tu. Ma no, parla tu, non lo puoi dire. No, 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 This is Gardoni's car. Hi, Speed. Hi, Chief. What's on your mind? You'll find out. Get in, boys. Well, it's just like I was telling you. I am what you call intermediately for these people who know what Chalazini is. And they ask, if you just let them make a one record, they're going to give you back your Chalazini. No, I have a contract. She cannot do it. I have said no. And when Martinetti says no, he does not say yes. Think. Think of my dignity, my reputation, my opera, my uh, farewell performances. <laughs> Very well. Then I'm going to tell all these people for who I am intermediately that uh, you say no. Hey, just a minute, just a minute, my paisano. Excuse me, please. Excuse me. I must have my Charlie's in back. Before, I say no, but now, now I say yes. Oh, paisano. Oh, gratitude. Then you change up your mind, eh? Si, si, si. Well, that's right, you see. I tell you about the Cervasi, and I give it back to you as si, you want, but si. that's all Perché right. Perché quando è stato da Milano, sai, non devo, una bella voce. Eh, bella voce, quella che canta in Cervasi. Sempre una donna ce li hanno, devi dire. Ma la opera, la sette. Quindi voi ce ne avete. Aspetta, aspetta, aspetta. How dare you come in here? What does this mean? Who are you? What do you want? Get out, I tell you. Right away. Uh, what's the matter with you? You got nothing on me. I got enough fingerprints of you to send you up for life. Where'd you get them? In her apartment. I know this baby. One of Gardoni's men. It's a snatch, all right, Chief. Snatch? What's a snatch? How did you get here, madam? An automobile? <laughs> <laughs> did you come here of your own accord? Well, uh, I... Say, if you fellas think this is a kidnapping, you're crazy. You stay out of this. 
Hey, what is this? Wait a minute. Did he hurt you, baby? Say, listen, Charlie, you've got to tell these fellas what it's all about. They think it's a kidnapping. Oh, no, I'm not kidnapped. I'm just mad at Martinetti because he won't let me be a benefactor. A benefactor? I don't want to sing the farewell performance. So I went away with Jerry until he let me be a benefactor. See? Hey, take her back to town. You take her back yourself. That scatterbrain has caused me enough trouble. Okay, and you'll come along too. Come on, madam. All right. You want to arrest Jerry? Oh, no, everything will be all right. Just come along. Come on, darling. Take it easy, will you? Don't you take that poor dog that's got feelings? Oh, you my dear Dr. Charlie Zini, my star, you are back, and oh, I am so happy. Yes, I'm back. But will I think? No. First I'll die. Unless you let me be a benefactor. But I will let you. I want you to. First, I say no. Then I meet this man over very few words. But when he talks, he say a lot. And now I say, you can make the record. Uh, ah. Uh, Jerry. <laughs> Mr. Gordon is so wonderful. Oh, and your camels. After we've made her record, I'm going to explain. You don't have to explain anything to me. Why don't you stop annoying me? Why don't you go away and stay away and let me alone? All right. I'll let you alone. The people, they want you to sing up. They don't want to sing up. I don't want to sing up. Believe me, I don't want to sing up. Madam, please, just listen. Come on, quick. Get over there and pass the pipe. What for? Jerry, they want me to sing opera. I don't want to sing opera. I want to sing like you. Mama, I want to make rhythm. I don't care what you sing or if you ever sing. Hey, come back here. No, let, 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 let him go. She will sing for me. You. No, you, you will sing for me. Yeah? All right. You sit down. The wine is too rich. Boy, bring a chair. going in the histories. Boss, 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 boss. You're looking at the man that's showing up, never says die. See, what kind of talk you got in now? Oh, you see, you got me talking that way. Anyway, it took me four days but I finally located Joey Hart. You, Remember, the canary? You, you mean you got him? Showing up? Well, where, where? Don't keep me in suspension. Well, the wife and I were over the polo grounds looking at the rodeo, see? Yeah. I'm picking a squid with a bunch of cowboys that's together. What is Gene Ortley? Who do I see? I ask you, who do I see? I do not ask you, who you see? Jerry Hart singing by the cowboys. Ain't that right, honey? Yes, sir. It was Jerry Hart, all right. Just to show us my name is Mrs. Danny the Duck. Well, why, 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 why you stand there? Go get him, get him. Okay, come on, sugar, come on. Don't you get what I mean? No, I can't say that I do. Well, look, all I want you to do is to make a record for the world. It'll only take you three minutes. Three minutes? Why, it only took me 11 seconds to rope and hog tie a calf for a world's record. Not this kind of a record. No calves, no hogs in this record. And no fire eaters and no acrobats. Did I find that out? All I want you to do is sing. Oh, you know, you know for the record. Um, oh. Well, why didn't you say that a half an hour ago? And yeah, maybe I should have at that. Thank you very much. I find it myself. Oh, there you are, Danny. Hello, boss. Just in the middle of negotiations. I take charge of this. You are this uh, Gene Opris? Yeah. Well, you don't know God, don't you? But I'm a man of a very few words. When I talk, I say a whole lot. And right now, I say... Gene! What do you want to do with these guns? Load them. All right. My... My dear, uh, Mr. Otris, if you'll be so kindly, we would like to make a record of your beautiful voice. Huh? <laughs> yeah. That's 
what I just found out. <laughs> you got some more nice uh, cow catchers like you? I got a cowboy band. Let's say, I got a young fella just joined this outfit that used to make records. Yeah, what's his name? Uh, Jerry Hart. Oh, well, Jerry Hart, did you, you know him? Sure, I know him very easy. <laughs> then you bring him along too, huh? Well, I wouldn't go without him. <laughs> well, that's fine. Well, let me shake your old cow hand. <laughs> then you come uh, tomorrow morning, huh? You'll be there tomorrow morning. Yeah. What time? Uh, between 10 o'clock. Thank you very much. You are so sweet to give me those beautiful flowers. Yes, and you were so very sweet to make that record for us, too. You made my mama very happy with that one. Huh? I'm glad. Yeah, my mama wants you to come over sometime for Italian dinners. Spaghetti al dente con aglio e olio, la propria moda. Magnifico. Oh, pardon me. Well, that's all right, Miss Rogers. Come in. You wanted to see me? Yes, sit down. Some time ago, you told me that the big romance, Jory Hart, that his records sell pretty good, eh? Yes, sir. You were in love with him. No? Ah, oh, you don't say no. And when a girl doesn't say no, she means yes. She's right. And right now, I say that Jerry Hart is a nice boy, and I think he'll make a very fine husband. Mm -hmm. Well, I wouldn't marry him if he were the last man on earth. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, uh, uh. Look at what you talk. You know what the judges say. Whatever you talk, it's going to be held up against you. Miss Rogers, you are my manager here. And Rod, just now you come with us. Madame Chalazini has got a very good idea. going to make everything uh, hokey dokey. Yes. Yeah. Come on. Come on. Where are you taking me? We go to the place where I make the home recordings. Madame Chalazini has a very good idea for you. Yes, my dear. We have a very good idea. <laughs> come on. Come on. Time in Reno, but the boys don't ride the ridge, spend half the pay at Chino, the other half at Bridge. It's round the time in Reno, but there ain't no punchers there. There's lots of pretty ladies with orange colored hair. The ladies stay just six weeks, and by how they do tan, it only takes them six weeks. To get rid of a man Oh, it's round up time in Reno My song has just begun So pass around the vino The worst is yet to come The day of Jesse James is or he hijacked with a pony. Now women take a whole lot more. They call it alimony. Oh, I'd rather be a cowhand than mix in with a dude. I'll stick to my sombrero and keep my high heel boots.
was grand. Thank you, Gene. Hey, fellas, would you like to hear the playback? Playback? Sure, you hear what you just recorded. Already? This New York is a fast place, isn't it? Come on, Jerry. Me too. Right in here, fellas. as I did. I didn't give you a chance to explain. But if you'll forgive me, I'll never distrust you again. Now, why don't you be just grand, little one? A nice fella. Awfully nice fella, look. Nice. <laughs> Whether you forgive me or not, I... I want you to know I love you, Jerry. I love you. Did we say that? the evidence that you love me. Do you need any? Shalazini, you are wonderful. Please, call me Charlie. Hokey dokies, Chucky. Honey, I love you. My mother always said I was just like my father. I'd marry anybody. Hey, what kind of a place is this? Did you ever feel 